interesting thing about hiking is that, yes, it's very physical, but a lot of it is also mental. And trying to overcome the panic that can kick in, the anxiety about, I don't know what's up next, I'm <laughs> uncertainty of it all. Um, you know, because even though I've got maps and I've got notes and I've looked at all the things to figure it out, there are still spots where you can't find the marker and know where to go next. So you kind of walk back and forth and back and forth and up and down and around trying to find it. And, or you get to a really high ledge that you can't step up onto with your backpack on because your backpack is so flipping heavy. Um, that, yeah, it just feels like if you do, you're going to fall backwards and you're going to die. Um, probably a little bit over dramatic, but you know, and thankfully in that situation, I had someone with me today so I could take my backpack off, which I would have done on my own anyway, take it off, hoist it up. Um, and then climb up. Um, which yeah, it's just, everything starts to fatigue as well. So trying to breathe deeply and drink lots of water. So you're staying hydrated because it's, thankfully I have had a bit of rain and so it cooled it right down. But when the rain stopped and the humidity came out, it could get pretty, um, yeah, pretty humid and feel really uncomfortable and so in those moments when you've had enough you just stop you just pause you take a breath look at the flowers that are blooming look at the lizard that's sunning itself on a rock and you know, look at the really interesting colors of the rock stop and just you know spot the manta rays out in the waves and just come back to the moment and relieve some of those anxious feelings um, and know that you just keep moving forward slowly at your own pace and everything will be okay. So here's dinner, risotto with some chunks of cheese cooked in two minutes overlooking the ocean. Welcome to my humble little home for the night. Here is my bed and my pillow. And let's see if you can see my view. The beach down there.
Hercules is bloody awesome. And that down there is part of where I'm heading to next. So I think I'm about two kilometers down. Eight and a half to go today. entered the swamp zone. Here we go. So I've just hit the halfway mark for today, which is only a kilometre less than what I did yesterday. Feeling a lot better than this point yesterday. Um, my foot's pretty sore, but it's okay. I think I need to strap it, just have a bit of extra support. Um, and it's not raining. It's actually not too hot either. So, hooray! I'm gonna keep going. Okay, the swamp before was just part one. Welcome to part two. to go today and just done my fifth creek crossing for the day. Third one where I've had to take my shoes off and now I have reached the swamp part I don't even know. I think I'm gonna get muddy. So hopefully that was the end of the swampy bit. I can't film it because I need all my hands. <laughs> But just in some nice rainforest. I'm really hoping that this comes out at the beach very soon. Fingers crossed. Unfortunately, there is still more swamp to go. of mangrove swampy stuff. I really hoped I was over this. Anyway, I've got to be getting close now. Just found a feather. Thank you bird guides. I've got this. And just when I was starting to enjoy that little bit of a walk again. Oh look! More swamp. I almost made it all the way along there and then along those tree stumps last step before land and I ended up in the water and finally a bit of swamp that I didn't have to walk through can you hear that? either I'm almost at the beach, which means I'm almost done for today. Oh, that's a massive waterfall. Either way, it means that I'm getting close. Woohoo! Oh, I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. I am so excited. I did it, day two. A really hard day. Well, 
recording moment ticked off right now. I had set myself a goal that before I turn 40, which is six months away, I would get to this spot. And I did it. And the weather cleared up because it was supposed to be thunderstorms the whole time I was here. And it is absolutely stunning. I am so flipping proud of myself right now. 17 kilometers down. day. I um, I thought today was going to be a lot harder and I'm surprised that the 10.5k day actually felt easier than the 6.5k day yesterday. Um, whether it was just that it was different landscape, it wasn't raining today, um, even the swamp. I I'm kind of scared myself a little bit about that and turns out it wasn't so bad. I got, got one shoe wet the whole time, the rest of it I managed to leap and hop my way across logs and roots and things and not end up knee deep in mud and stuck. Um, there are a few spots where it felt a little bit creepy, just like is there a crocodile in here watching me? But other than that, sun's starting to go behind one of the mountains out the back there. So I had to leave the falls, but I might try and go and do breakfast up there tomorrow morning. See how I go. Because the path goes up that way. For the next day's walk so anyway I'm feeling really good ready for some dinner finish setting up camp since I haven't done that because I wanted to get up to the falls before it got dark today has been a 10 out of 10 day I am flipping grateful for my body for my shoes well, my backpack being a bit lighter now that I've eaten some food <sighs> and just that I get to be here. Peace out. <laughs> every day that I was here and I almost cancelled this trip so I asked for a sign do I still go and because I was watching how to train your dragon with my three-year-old at the time 
first thing that popped into my head was a dragon. I was like, I can't do that. That's not what I want. It's not even what I'm thinking of. And I was like, last time it was a water dragon that you asked as for as a sign. So I didn't really have a clear vision of what it was. Or I did, but I couldn't put a word to it. Anyway, I knew it was some type of reptile, lizard thing, but it wasn't a dragon. So climbing around the Glasshouse Mountains on Monday, and a little lizard ran on top of my shoe and sat there for a minute while I was having a break at the top. And I was like, there's my sign, there's my reptile. And now that I'm here, these little brown bush lizards just run across the path in front of me the entire way. They are everywhere. So if in doubt, ask for a sign because it was supposed to be pouring with rain and thunderstorms for the whole four days I was here. And today, there's blue sky back there. And there was blue sky yesterday afternoon. And no rain, except for the first day. So there you go. I have learnt along my hike so far. Um, today's a fairly easy day. It's about five kilometres along the beach and two kilometres down, two and a half down to the beach, I think. Um, so pretty, pretty easy today. Um, so, lesson number one. God, where do I even start? Lesson number one. Go at your own pace. There is no race. Although I did discover that the fastest time someone has ever done this was about three hours and 30 minutes, but that was ultra marathon runner and Ironman and Olympian Courtney Atkins. Um, so, you know, there's no race. You're not gonna win. Just go at your own pace. Number two, bike shorts are amazing. Thank you Rockwear. This is not sponsored by the way at all. Um, I have got a pair of bike shorts that I threw in at the last minute and I was like I'm not gonna wear these. I'd rather wear my, my shorts. But day two and three I wore them and I didn't end up with the back pain that I had on day one. So the compression, kind of like you know a belly band when you're pregnant, the compression from that was flipping awesome. Um, and supporting my back. So highly, highly, highly recommend a really good supportive pair of bike shorts if you're doing long distance walking to support your back. Um, number three is strapping tape. Strapping tape is a godsend and used it to support my feet as well. Um, number four, walking poles. Flipping awesome. Super good to help you balance because when you've got 16, 17 kilos on your back, it makes a huge difference having something to help you balance. Anyway. Okay, so a few little musings from this hike. Um, one, all the things that I thought that I would think of, worry about, all the fears that came up beforehand, didn't really come to pass or eventuate or even take up space in my brain 
in my mind this whole time because when you're walking all you have time to do is think of your next step you're watching constantly like I'm watching now you know which line to take which step to take um, what's the safest way to go um, all those things and so everything else gets cleared out so it's really meditative which is awesome and partly why I wanted to come and do this um, and two this one's as a parent as a mom you don't even have time to worry about your kids and that's okay because you know and you trust that the people who are caring for them are the parent, grandparents, friends, whoever, that they've got this. Because when you're doing something like this, your own care and well-being is top priority. And if you're doing this on your own, there's no one else here to look after you, so it's on you. So yeah, it's just a couple of little things and I think that last one's a really good reminder as a mum, as a parent, that you know it's on it is on you to take time out to look after yourself to you know make sure that your well being is being met. Um, that your safety is being met. Just do a, do a little bit of a check-in with yourself. Physical, mental, emotional. And yeah. It's a bit wonky because I am, again, focusing on walking, not filming. Made it to the beach. Just walking along and thought this was a rock. Turns out, some bones. Yay! Woo! <laughs> 32 kilometers. High five!